Hi there, this is Cynthia Heathco and Nicole Reimer and we're from the Women's Chamber of Commerce in Palm Beach County and you are watching Women Mean Business and this is where you'll discover about us, our members and the footprint that we're leaving on our community. So stay tuned every week on Thursday on our Facebook page as we're coming to you live. One o'clock. We'll see you then. Bye. Hi there, this is Cynthia Heathco and Nicole Reimer from the Women's Chamber of Commerce, and we have an amazing guest today, the audacious woman herself, Pamela Toussaint. And oh, yeah, and I'm going to tell you, <laughs> she for having me. Yeah, it's so good to have you. <laughs> Thank you for being and here. Look, not only she's audacious times one, but two, she's two. got a second edition of her book that just came out. And I tell you what, I was reading the first one. I love it. When I met you about Thank a year you. and a half ago, I started to read your book. And I was really just like impressed and inspired by you. So now that Nicole and I have the opportunity to interview you for the Women's Chamber of Commerce, it's like, ah, life is great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, so Pamela, you've been a member of the Women's Chamber for quite some time. For quite a few years. I, I think maybe about five or six years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Give or take. And it's been a great relationship. As with any of these organizations, the reason I joined the Women's Chamber mm -hmm. is to meet like-minded women and right. establish businesses, establish business relationships. And to that end, it's been amazing. I mean, whereas I, well, Kara and I knew each other from the previous chamber, <laughs> but then we kind of just kind of trailed along to the Women's Chamber, and then relationships just developed from there. Now we are collaborators slash friends, partners, whatever the right term is, it's all of that plus <laughs> more. And of course I got to meet you amazing ladies as well. So it's yeah. been really great relationship wise. As far as any sort of a tangible piece of business that came from a women's chamber person, no, but that's not the whole point. The yeah. point is building larger relationships and the rest of it will follow. Yeah, and it's about also building your brand and you become Absolutely. more visible to those within your network. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's great working on committees. I actually worked on the uh, giraffe. <gasps> Uh, oh, nominations wow. committee two years Very in a row. Nice. So they got to meet women at a you know, sort of a deeper right. level. Wonderful. So that was fabulous. And the yes. Giraffe Awards are coming next March for anybody who's interested. That's, That's 24 correct. years, 23 years, something like that. 24th. 24th. Yeah. Uh, so that's like a, a, a big while. thing for us. Yes, it certainly has been. So you do everything, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> you do, because I was reading, I mean, you're an entrepreneur, yes, you're I a am. business owner, you're an author, yes. but you have a very specialized business, the Ultimate yes. Image Coach. So yes. talk about that. What is, what is that exactly? Okay, the Ultimate Image Coach is a business that focuses on primarily on women, but it has been expanded now. I actually have men as clients. Focus on helping people to, to understand their power, mm. to first Ooh. of all build a brand, right. follow their, if you think about it, passion, purpose, power, prosperity. Oh, very so we good. work on their passion Ooh. and then use that Four to develop piece. their, exactly, I use that it. to develop their brand and then see how that brand aligns with what they really want to do in life. And the motivation for the business is, of course, um, I'm a serial networker. When I moved to <laughs> I Florida like 14 years ago okay. and I hit the streets. <laughs> Started networking with everybody under the sun. I mean, City Place, I should have a little room there because I'm always there. <laughs> and I noticed that women were not very happy with their situation. They were going from career, job to job, and it's the same old, same old. They weren't very happy. And the one thing, the common thread that I heard from them is that we just don't feel as if we're valued. I knew a lot That's of folks huge. in HR. That's I'm a huge. member of HR Palm Beach County. And it was the same thing. And these are women that senior levels. I'm not talking about entry level people or people who are, you know, maybe two or three years into a career. These are people who are more senior who still lack that confidence to do something with themselves. And I said, you know what, one of these days when I'm not working, I am really going to, you know, start something right. and do something. But I never, so that was kind of in the back of my it mind. It was a seed, it really, was that was seed. planted a while ago. And so, but what really triggered the audacious part of this is that I just decided one day that, you know what, I'm done with this corporate job. It was not fulfilling, it wasn't what I wanted to do because my passion in the corporate world was to work with folks to build their image, mm -hmm. their presence, have them be able to walk into an executive conference room and communicate with leaders and knew that they had something to, some value to yeah. add. And that I found lacking a lot, whether it was senior women or millennial, I have a millennial daughter and then I just said, you know what, I am going to do something with this business. And then one day, on a Friday afternoon, something happened at work. 
where the chief administrative officer, the person who ran the entire organization, stepped out of line one more time. Aha. Uh -huh. It was the, the straw the that straw broke. That yes. Broke the camera. That was and my it's always moment. that one, right? Yes. And I went home and I said to Gabe, I said, you know what? This is the day. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to resign on Monday. And he said, you're going to do what? <laughs> Your husband. Yes. Your husband. Yeah. So we know who Gabe is. <laughs> he says, you're going to do what? And I said, yes. There's been a calling. If right. not now, when? You know, I'm not, a, as you can see, I'm not a spring chicken, right? But she's amazing <laughs> and beautiful. And I told you earlier, we were we were like, we have to make sure we bring it today because Pam yeah. always brings it. So oh, we had to make sure we were on point today. Yeah. Very much. So, I mean, I literally went in that Monday morning, handed in my resignation wow. and came home and said, let's, be, let's put the business plan together. And uh, we sat around the kitchen table and he said, well, what's the business you're going to go into? I said, I'm going to do career transformation strategy. Help, help people who are kind of stuck in their careers to kind of move on to the next thing. And not just transition, but right. transform. And uh, wow. I said, what should we call this business? And he came up with a name. Oh, good he out. Said, what I didn't about know that. Ultimate Image Coach? And I said, you know what? That sounds pretty good. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. You no know, skin in the game. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we um, started the business, did a business plan, and started to do a lot a lot of pro bono stuff, a lot of free stuff. That's the part people don't want to talk about in business. The, the stuff in the beginning yes. you kind of have to do to get yourself going. Well, and that's part of <laughs> building your brand. It you is. You have to do it. So you get your name out there. That's what I did. And people say, you know, you're wasting your time by doing all this free stuff, but the free stuff may take a couple, three years, yeah. but it will come back. Yeah. I did a lot of free work for Career Source, Palm Beach County, helping people in transition kind of get their image together, right. their self-confidence, and now they're a client of mine. Wow. Same thing with the company in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale. They just wow. called me back the other day to give me a, it was a small job, but it was still a job. So the first thing I have to tell people is that the journey of, you know, getting from where you are to where you really want to be with your career or with your business, it's not a sprint. It's, it's not linear definitely either. Definitely a marathon. Yeah. It's definitely not. <laughs> no, you know, it's it's not everywhere. Path. It's not how always what you set out, even though you <laughs> do that business plan and you should. That's right. Exactly. It gives you a guide. You still are. That is yeah. so yeah. true. <laughs> There's Cold. so many bumps that you Twist encounter and turns that and so forth. sometimes yes. you can't account for. It. It's just business. Yes. I know you've and had a lot them. of peaks and valleys. <laughs> a lot of peaks and valleys. And it's so normal. We know it, right? It's normal. Absolutely. Yeah, right? It is normal. So, it, as I said, don't expect that you're starting a business today and next year you're going to be smooth sailing yeah. and turn a profit. No. It's nice to think. <laughs> it's nice to think, nice to but think. you've got to kind of realize that it goes like this. And right. we'll talk about the path in the book. Yeah. Um, and and you, you mentioned marathon. Okay, so yes. it is a marathon. And yes. you brought with you a medal yes. from a marathon. I brought my mar I was we're doing a little bit of uh, decluttering at home. Uh, yes, because uh, it's the end of the year and everybody <laughs> should be doing that. And I found my, little, my first little marathon. I love it. Day. So the thing about the marathon is, um, first of all, you have to know that I am the least, I have no sports skills in my background. <laughs> okay, I was, we, we're I, sisters on that Okay, one. cool. I, we are definitely sisters on that I one. was the one who during recess, I grew up in Jamaica, recess, everybody's out there playing cricket or whatever, yeah. and I'm sitting against the wall with a book. Or okay. trying to, try to teach another student how to read, how to get to the next grade level. So wow. when I actually decided, uh, my mom had passed away from a stroke, and the, I was living in Philadelphia at the time. Go Philly. Yeah, yeah, Yay, go, go Philly. <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, do you, do you want to walk, do a marathon or a half marathon in memory of your mom? And I said, oh, walk? Wow. How far? And they said, 13.1 <laughs> miles. 13. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, I didn't know half. that. It's a oh, half. I didn't think of that. And they says, don't worry, there's a training. So you, I, I, said, oh. well, I said, you know, you let's do something out of the box. And I did. Good for and you. I ended up walking at Disney World. On in January of 2004. Wow. And I finished. I finished. <laughs> and she has her medal. <laughs> and I would wear that every day, personally. I'd be walking oh, around like, I got a medal. Here's the crazy thing. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I told my daughters, I have a daughter who uh, is a huge Disney fan. I said, I want to do the Disney Marathon. Right. I didn't and know. I've it is I had a plan two years now to do it, and I haven't done it. I think, we, I think we need to hold her accountable, now. don't but you? But I'm walking now, yeah. so, yeah, so it'll get there. This crazy. is on my list to do. It will change do. your life. I understand that, but how crazy is you brought that yeah. in today, and go. that's been in the back of my mind that it's I really you. need to get this it's done. Absolutely, the it. universe talks to you, I, even if you don't want to listen. Absolutely, so let's talk about it. Taps you on the shoulder. Sometimes it sends you emails. Yeah, I mean, if I can do it. 
listen, okay. you, you can do it. Okay. So I did two more half marathons after that. Oh, just oh, by the way. Just by the way. Yeah, so, and by the way. Two books. So that was so, great preparation for this journey. As right. Well, that's the thing. Now we know how you came up with the name Audacious Woman. Did yes. you do some really <laughs> audacious things in your life? Yes. So talk about the book. Okay. Okay. So because the book. you have two of them. So the book, the first book, um, I wrote three, three, and, three and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and it was released during Women's History Month that year. And the whole idea for the book is, again, my journey of starting a business, you know, crazy enough just to walk away from a corporate job, and then the steps that I took along the way. Right. I also had a lot of input from my millennial daughter, mm -hmm. who actually, when my business was really fledgling, she actually lost her job. Oh, wow. And she said, well, you know, what am I going to I said, come and join my business. No paycheck, but <laughs> no paycheck, but come work for me. So we, we worked on it together. And everywhere we went, whether it was here or in Atlanta, people said, how did you ladies do this? Do you guys have workshops? Do you, can you teach us how to do it? Wow. And we went home and said, no, there's a book here. There's a book. So we decided that we would write a book. So that's right. her name, Tamara. We would write a book and then we would actually put together a step-by-step -step personal branding guide wow. to help people. So we typically sit, we either do group sessions or we do one-on-one -on -one with people who said, you know what, I know this is not it, but I don't know where I'm going to go from here. Can you help us with the journey? And that really is the essence of the book. The book has, um, give or take, ten, five, or, five or six steps. You, first, you have to kind of throw away the notion of, I'm just looking for a job. Right. It's not what the book is about. It's the transformation of your mindset. Is that we're, what do you want to do? Five years, ten years down the road, if you think back and said, hey, this has been a wonderful ride, what will right. the ride have been? And so we kind of get people that stepping out of that. And then, what are you good at and what are you passionate about? So we go through the personal branding steps. Okay. And we actually wow. then walk from there to say, well, how do you stand out from the pack? Because one of the things you don't want to be is in my example, uh, just a career coach who, you know, we have a million of them in yeah, South Florida. So yeah, how do yeah. you differentiate your brand? You have to step out. Of step that, out, yeah. exactly. And so it just kind of takes them step by step. But the most important part about it is that there are a couple of things that women really lack, and I'd say lacked, but no, they still lack it, is that self-confidence and presence. Yeah. So that was the essence of yeah. Ultimate Image Coach and also the book is teaching people how to have to radiate that powerful positive image mm -hmm. because frankly we as women have so much to offer even I should say even men men even um, Warren Buffett and others yeah. say we think women should be the leaders of our country and our businesses because they have yes. emotional intelligence we do have emotional intelligence <laughs> we have we're organized presence. usually yes we're organized we are collaborators we're yes. team builders as we are here women mean business look there we've got go. so many people Absolutely. we collaborate to make this happen the one thing that's missing is self-confidence that yes. is so true yes as women that is the hardest thing for us to do is to own yes, first right. identify mm -hmm. and accept the fact that we have skill sets to do so many because we're always like yes. well maybe i shouldn't go for that i shouldn't go for that right because you're not confident in yourself instead mm -hmm. of just saying you know what let me just do it absolutely. and when you break free of those chains mm -hmm. amazing things can happen absolutely you and so your book helps your own people way. get that confidence to yes. get out of their own way exactly wow. so the goal of the book is just to inspire women that yes, you have a lot to offer. Right. Get out of your own way and just step out of your, do something, do the unexpected. Yeah. You know, uh, take like action. It, take action, exactly. Okay. And then also, but don't forget at the end of the day, self-care. Right. So I end up the book by talking about first take care of number one. Take care of yourself because we always put ourselves where women always last. put ourselves last. Whether last. you're a mom, even if you if you're not a mom, you mm -hmm. you take care. We just we're nurturers. We take care of everybody, that is so true. our family, our friends. That, that we is, put ourselves last. So but true. you can't pour from an empty cup. You better believe you it. You know, so, so it's so important. Do you feel that um, men don't wait to be asked, but women do? As yes. far as starting their own business or kind of branching out on their own, that yes. we're always waiting. We're always waiting. We, we know we, if we can't keep up this sure thing. By the way, there's no such thing as a safe no. job anymore. No, it's no, right. there's not. Um, maybe we, sh we can't ask for funding because right. we don't. We're not confident enough. We don't ask for, uh, and I'm getting much better at this than I used to be. But in terms of just walking up to a senior right. person with the city of West Palm or whomever and say, "This is what I do." And I really can help you if your if your areas of deficiencies right. are these three things. I can come in and help you fix this. 
and it takes a lot of confidence. But to your point, is that we don't usually kind of step out and offer ourselves as the, an expert. Right. We figure, oh, we, well, my famous example is if there is a job and there's a man and a woman vying for the job and the woman is, say, 75% qualified per the little things that they have, the bullet points they have on the job description, she's going to say, ah, I'm not going for it because I'm not qualified. Right. A guy, 50% qualified, ah. I'm going for it. He'll act like it's his job already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's his <laughs> job already. So, he owns it. And that's uh, one thing that's to your, we do me. not own our abilities. We do not own our and, abilities. And how much that we already have within us. And that that comes to my next question mm -hmm. because you left a corporate job that was somewhat stable at a yes. time where people want stability yes. and they don't yes. want to mm -hmm. step out of themselves to do something maybe that they always wanted to do if they're not happy. My dad left a, a stable job at 50 something to go mm -hmm. into real estate, not easy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about that. Did, were you nervous at all? I mean, of course, because that's hard, but I would also think that maybe it empowered you because you've had so many years of, of experience and working and right. you've had so many years to build up skill to right. transfer into your new career. Absolutely. I mean, there were so many emotions, Yeah. you know, nervous, excited, and especially nervous about the fact that I'm stepping away from a for South Florida, pretty nice salary, yeah. you know, and uh, benefits and so forth. And I was nowhere close to qualifying for, you know, Medicare and all those things. So I had to, we, we kind of had to have a hard discussion about it, my husband and I, to say, well, we're going to have to cut back on, you know, a few things, like a few cruises. <laughs> <laughs> a few vacations here and there. But it's real talk. I mean, it's, it's real, real stuff. Talk. If you want this, mm -hmm. you have to do this to absolutely, get there. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And, um, and then understand that you're just going to be, sort of in a new area, you have to kind of step out and do some free things, build some relationships, yeah. and be much more assertive than you would normally have been in the corporate world. Mm. The corporate world, you get that paycheck. In the bank, you're good. Yeah, you don't have to kind of, you know, get really super assertive. When you're a business, knowing that, you know, you're going to have to earn yes. every... You're net, relying on yourself yes, at really, this point. It really yeah. builds that self-confidence. Either it will make you stronger, it will break you. And I was determined that it wasn't going to break. It wasn't going to break. Because mm -hmm. people aren't buying your service. They're, they're, they're you selling yourself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's that personal mm -hmm. relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to be on all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, I know, I know for me with, with my business and the clients come in, they come in and, you know, they'll buy this table because they love the table, but they buy it from me as opposed to somebody else because right. they want to do business with me. Right. And it's because of that invested time that I give them. Right. But it's a lot of work. It is a it's lot always, of work. It's always, you're yeah, always, always on. to be on. Always and you're on. working more. I think it's a misnomer that if you own your own business, you're working less. Oh, that is so true. You will be you're working, working so much That's more. Right. You, never, you never turn it off. You, <laughs> you know? never turn it off. Weekends are not yours because you always, ha there's always Ab something to be absolutely. working on or doing or networking whereas yes. a nine to five you're done at five absolutely but you go home really miserable know, <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean that's really the difference is you go home miserable mm -hmm. because you're you're helping somebody else live out their dream as yes. opposed to when it's your business you're doing it yourself that's exactly for your right. own benefit yeah and to that whole point about living um, you know their dream instead yeah. of yours in my book I say do you want to live someone else's dream or someone else's goals yeah. versus your own mm -hmm. and that's really the nut of being an entrepreneur and I, if you were to ask me, as many ask me, what, what's one of the most successful traits as a, for, you know, for, for myself as yeah. an entrepreneur is relationships. Yeah. You cannot get it done without building some really, really solid relationships. We were just saying earlier about people do business with people they know, like, yeah. and trust. Yes. Oh, that is ever so true as an entrepreneur. Yeah, and to nurture those those relationships as well. Mm -hmm. And um, you touched on earlier. There's a lot of business coaches in yeah. South yes. Florida, but yes. you've done something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, um, you've got the gender parity strategy. Yes. Yes, and that's I, something we're obviously we talk about a lot at the Women's mm -hmm. Chamber. I don't think a lot of people know we talk about it a lot. They should by now. <laughs> yes. um, gender parity. It's like over 200 years for that to come. I know. To equal pay. Yes. It's 2018. It's going to take that long. It really is going to. It's gonna, really I'm, different. I'm it's still out there. Did you have, first of all, did you have um, that issue when you worked in corporate world? And is that something that you knew you were going to offer? Or is just it, it had to come mm -hmm. because you needed to. Yeah, it came organically that you knew right. you had to offer that to organizations. Right. I had the issue um, in, in, the, in the corporate world. Not so much from my own experience, but for folks who worked 
for me mm -hmm. and women who worked on other teams. Senior to me, they'd come and say, you know, I, underst I don't understand why this person makes this. I have greater skills than this guy. Right. He's making much more than I'm making. He's in the executive suite. He gets to do presentations. He can take half day off on Friday for a golf <laughs> outing. <laughs> right. And we're, you know, kind of burning it up to right. 5 o'clock that evening. And um, so when I started my business, I kind of had that on the back burner. And I said, but you know, you don't bite off everything at once, Pamela. Mm -hmm, yeah. Just kind of take it easy. And then a, a year and a half ago, someone reached out to me from Miami and said, your name was given to us as someone who might help us with some gender parity issues that we're wow. having. So this is a firm that's totally male dominated. They're oh. Latin American, headed up by Latin American folks. No women at senior level, no women at second level wow. down. So oh, his wow. idea during Women's History Month is for me to come in and do some work with his senior executives and also to, with women. And the point of the gender parity is we're not going to eliminate it over the, you know, yeah. the, you know what is it? Women still make only 70, yeah. 70 cents for every dollar a man makes. We're only about 5% of the CEOs in the, in the large companies in the U.S. Can you believe it? Wow. And, it's 2018. Um, it is it's 2018. 20, it's almost 2019, to be quite honest. So, yeah. And what's even more maddening is that women have the skills that most yes. executives, I mean, if you took gender off of a resume yeah. and you look at women's skills, those are what most CEOs, global CEOs, are looking for. The only difference is one's a man, one's the other one's a woman. So what, what I, my approach is to work with men to have them understand the importance of having women in the e equal ranks in, right. in the boardroom. That's, that's fine. Um, but also work with women to have them be much more confident. To go after and it's even accept an that. Exactly. It's just the ask. And yes, yeah. it's the ask. And also executive presence is so critical. Yeah. And women, there's a study that came out by an HR think tank, maybe four years ago, I've used it a lot in my training, where it says that um, executive presence has their trio of skills that anyone who wants to get into the executive suite must have. And it's appearance, uh, communication, and gravitas. Gravitas is the most important, probably close to 80% of wow, what yeah. that means. And gravitas is the ability to be confident, to walk mm -hmm. into a room full of you know, executive strangers and be able to kind of make your point, the confidence, speak well, speak convincingly, and to be taken seriously. And that was a skill that was most efficient in women. Wow. Which feeds right into my business because that's what I teach, right. self-confidence and so forth. And um, so that's, that's how I've been working on the women's side. And for the men who are in the boardroom, they will let them know the benefits of having women as an, you know, a, yeah. an executive right. on par with them. Companies do much better. Oh, of course. You've, been doing, this, of you've course. been doing this for about a year and a half with that one company? Yeah, about a year okay. and a half with this particular company. And that particular company got your name because of a relationship yeah. that Absolutely. you had with somebody else. And that relationship could have started three years yeah. or five Absolutely. years ago. Somebody from my HR world who is herself okay. left HR and she's a consultant. See? They See? reached out to her and then she said, oh, without a doubt, it, Pamela is the person who can, can help you with that. So I had to trek down to Miami and wow. work with a wow. bunch of, you know, Spanish-speaking executives, but they were very receptive, and they said they never really thought about it. And that's the—that's what is so maddening yeah. is that these How fellows do they not think of don't it? really <laughs> notice that. The bad people. No, they just, they, they no. just don't see it yeah. from that perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're it's, all men, you know. So that's uh, so that—that's my thing. So I, I, that's a whole new area because someone kind of you know right. pull it out of the recesses of my experience and no, so but forth. that's awesome. Yes. Well, so. you know, life ends up uh, giving you something that you need, not necessarily something that you thought, Absolutely. you know. What's mm -hmm. been like the most uh, surprising thing going into your own business and being an entrepreneur? Well, uh, cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no we said there. real talk here and we yeah, mean it, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's like, woo, when yeah. are we going to kind of, you know, when are we going to yeah. get profitable here? But beyond that, the most surprising thing is how in 10 years, we, the re new relationships that I've built mm -hmm. to the point where you have the confidence, you know, as Kara, as you guys know that yeah. I work with Kara a lot, and we were able to kind of go out there and respond to a very competitive request for proposal from right. one of the mis municipalities here in, in the county. And now we're taken, you know, very seriously as a, very as, as, a, as a coaching slash training business and yesterday I'm not going to say the name but a treasurer of one of the main cities here in Palm Beach County called me I was actually in my car 
and said, um, said, what kind of coaching do you do, Pam? That's a one-on-one -on -one piece I mm -hmm. really talk about. And I said, I work with, it depends on what your needs are, but I work with a lot of mid-level people who want to either want to get to the next level or their leaders determine that they should get to the next level, but they're lacking certain skills. Mm -hmm. So primarily the focus is our executive presence and emotional intelligence. And he says, tell me a little bit more about both of those topics. And when I tell him, he said, could you give me a proposal tomorrow? I have two mid-level managers here wow. on my team who need some help. And I think oh, wow. your name was, I was reminded that's what you do by someone wow. else. Back to relationships. Back to relationships. And mm -hmm. it's you put in the work. You put uh, in the years of building and maybe correct. not making what you thought, you know, in the beginning right. and mm -hmm. being accepting of that and being new, which right. I think a lot of people don't want to be as new exactly. in something, right. um, to get here. Mm -hmm. You had to go through the work Absolutely. to get here. Yeah, and being committed and being yeah. passionate. Because without passion, these things would no, not, you can't keep going. You, you might as well just not even bother. Yeah. Right. And I know you've mentioned Kara a few times, and for the for the uh, the audience, it's Kara Joy Nash from She's Online. Yes. Who's behind uh, the camera? Who's behind, behind the camera? Helps, yes. helps out with uh, the camera work, so we love her and thank her. Yeah, she <laughs> she keeps us straight. Yes, she does. <laughs> she makes me look so good. Yeah. She makes us, oh, listen, let me tell I you. I love honey. it. And she's assisted in getting this uh, Women Mean Business yeah, uh, she's one right. of series off the, off the ground, so I, I adore her. Absolutely. So what is the uh, one thing that you would tell somebody who's watching and said, gosh, you know, I've been in the corporate world for 20 years and I'm so miserable, but what I want to get out. I want to yeah. get out. I want to do something. I have something I'm passionate about. What would be like the one piece of advice you would give them? My first question to them would be, what are you passionate about? If this is not floating your boat, um, then what would? What would what would be happy happiness, prosperity, and success look like for you? And then they'd say, "Ooh, I don't have time to even have a passion." That's usually the answer I get. Yeah. I got it last week, Thursday night, with a bunch of ladies. Wow. And I said, "Oh yeah, everybody has a passion. Think back to your if you have to go back as far as childhood days. Oh, yeah. Think about what you're passionate about, and see how if uh, and then you know how that leads to your you." reinventing yourself, mm -hmm. you know, your brand, mm -hmm. and then how that ties into something that someone might need in terms of skills or in terms of services. Um, I worked with a nurse who said, I've been doing nursing for 25 years, and I'm just so burnt out. I'm just done. Yeah, and I said, well, what are you passionate about? She said, I love to make cookies. I dream of being a cake artist. Wow. Yeah, I talk about her in my book. And wow. I said, so what's getting in the oh. way? She said, I'm scared. Yeah, I fear. don't want to leave the, the job, and I would go, Spumps. Yes. And you know, the, the things that we worked on a little game plan, and I said, Well, don't give up your day job. Right. Yet. You know, can't still get the paycheck, but start to work on what you're passionate about, and it will energize you. Yes. And I was reminded the other day that after she finished her transformation journey, she became a cupcake designer, and we invited her to be a I said, how would you like to be a sponsor, dessert sponsor for one of See? our events? And she said, what's a dessert sponsor? <laughs> and I said, bring a bunch of cupcakes. Right. And, yes. and it was a holiday thing, so she made her cupcakes and put them on a, you know, like a Christmas tree oh, design wow. thing. And, and that made her that. happy. Yes, and she got orders. People were See, taking orders See, and that's the whole there. thing. That's, yeah. So relationships, mm -hmm. and the thing is, yeah. fear is going to be there. Of course, that never goes away. It, I mean, it's not yeah, going to go I away. Mean, it doesn't mean it should stop you. Right, it should drive you. It should drive it's you even more. Absolutely. Wow. And then I was motivated to do book two because of all of the whole Me Too and right. all of these things. And I said, I'm so tired of all of us kind of saying, oh, what a lousy world we live in. You go home and you see this news yeah. over and over. Let's take control. Let's figure out how do we Do something can, about it. Let's own our power. And take action. do something about it. Take action. So it's really a call to action. I love for women it. To okay. Do it. So that's wow. thank you so much. And they can get your books on Amazon. Yeah, tell everybody yes. where they can find you. Where, if they want to work with yeah, you my and book all is that. On Amazon. Yay. And um, okay. I'm going to be at the Miami Book Fair on the 18th of November. So if anyone is in the Miami area, stop by and Go see, see her. Me. Yes, it's She's huge. We adore her. It's She's a amazing. huge book fair. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And so, if they want to work with you, where do they find you? Uh, you can. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook. Twitter, I'm all over the place, and you can always email me at info at ultimateimagecoach.com, or LinkedIn is where I keep all of my branding up to date, so okay. I would say please connect with me, Pamela Toussaint, and I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. And we'll make sure everybody's linked to you. Thank okay. you. Pam, thank, thank you so you. much. This was great. I it adore it. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much. Oh, we, we're all love 
here on Women Mean Business. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. I have, um, book, I have a book for each of you. Oh, I love it. And we gave gifts. Oh, my done. goodness. We're so oh, excited. That's right. So, Pam, Yay. thank you again <laughs> thank for you. coming. And uh, please reach out to Pam. She's amazing. We adore her. Thank we are, you. you know, this so. is lovely. I love what you guys are doing with thank this. You this so thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, guys. So we will see you next time on Women Mean Business. I'm Nicole Reimer, Cynthia Heathcote, and our guest today, Pamela Toussaint. Thank you so much.